Hello and welcome to the Assetto Corsa Competizione Sim Series. This is uh, not our usual weekend broadcast and it's not for our usual series. This is the inaugural round of ACCS GT. This is going to be our uh, team event inspired by the uh, format of British GT. And our first round is going to be at the wonderful Brands Hatch circuit. As we roll into game, we can see many people will be happy to see that it is raining. We have a damp beginnings to this evening's event as we just see the first few cars going out for qualifying. So welcome everybody, thank you for coming along. Thank you Pavel for subscribing yesterday with his Twitch Prime and then complaining that I didn't give him a shout out even though he's literally a member of staff. And uh, thank you for everyone who's not Pavel who has turned up uh, today. Uh, we're obviously going to have a good time. We've got two 15 minute qualifying, uh, 50 minute for AM and then 50 minute for Pro. And then it is going to be an hour long race with a driver swap in the middle, obviously, in the mandatory pit stop. On Brands Hatch, a fantastic little track. Uh, obviously, a smaller grid than usual because even though it's only 16 cars, it is obviously double that many actual drivers. And it's on a Monday rather than a weekend. But we're going to have some good fun. Hopefully, we get some interesting weather. Um, the rain is lessening through qualifying, so we might see uh, start to see a bit of a dry line coming up and uh, that might uh, help things out a little bit we're gonna hop on board with Benjamin Horriot in the Lexus for our first lap of Brands Hatch down the very famous uh, paddock uh, hill corner really fast corner you've got to get on the power super early and you're obviously going at really awkward angles into Druid, a really slow hairpin. That is honestly the most exciting and, and unique part of the course down through Graham Hill, I believe it's called. I'm not great with the names. I'll have to uh, get them up so I can remember them. Towards where you turn right through McLaren uh, here for the uh, Indy course, but we turn left up through the Grand Prix course. It's a really uh, awkward track, this. Uh, and a lot of people find it really hard to get into a rhythm on it, but once they're in the rhythm, it is a track that actually uh, a lot of people do uh, enjoy. Really tight track as we come up there through an incredibly fast corner, surprisingly fast that corner, honestly. You need to be accelerating throughout basically the whole thing. Down uh, to Dinkledell, the greatest named track on any corner. Up across the crest, you've got to keep going again at very high speed. It's one of the things that makes this so uh, tricky, I think, to to get just a good lap in and also tricky to overtake, obviously. It's a very tight track, but a lot of the corners are surprisingly fast. But yeah, so coming across the uh, final line there, we'll see the first time coming out on the board. Benjamin Horry at 131 in the Lexus which used to be really good in the wet, and uh, I thought might still be pretty good in the wet, but uh, I have found out uh, it's not. It's now a very tricky car to drive in the wet, so uh, we'll have to see how uh, he manages. Just uh, quickly trying to get... There we go, track map of Brands Hatch so I can get the corner names. Uh, a lot of them named after uh, old racing drivers at Brands Hatch, very traditional way to name corners if they don't have a, a good way to be named from their surroundings. And uh, Benjamin actually has managed to keep that car at the front of the order. Very nicely done. We've got two McLarens coming out next, as we see in the background there. Benjamin going very wide, not setting uh, comparable times so far. We obviously also have the 1M driver who, for... Uh, qualifying purposes will qualify as if he is one of the programs
So let's have a look through some more drivers. Ronnie Smith is our solo uh, AM driver qualifying for uh, his team. Obviously, uh, Ronnie Smith and Ty Clean uh, Nagelvort, uh, drivers who I don't know, who are uh, in here at the bottom so far. We then have here uh, Michael Wang, who just left the server and came back in, so I'm not able to click on him right now. Hopefully they got back in in the right order. Joe Grace is going to be in the Audi with uh, Daniel Basic. Then Mark Benson and Tom Tweedy in the Golf liveried uh, Aston Martin. Uh, Maitland Price, Richard Maitland Price here. Uh, driving the Bentley, the only Bentley in the field, interestingly, along with Alan Noah. And then obviously the three drivers who have set time, Alec de Vries and uh, Montalvo, who are another two drivers I don't know, in uh, McLaren. Andre Dixon Chen and Chris McKenna, pretty strong team there, and another McLaren and Richard Maitland Price with Alan Noah has just jumped to the top of Benjamin Horrit and James Coviesto. The grass is close enough in the dry. I'd be terrified in wet conditions, says uh, Trismus. I totally agree. Uh, going back to what makes this track both so exciting and uh, challenging is, again, a lot of these corners are very fast, very flowing, and you do really push to the limit. And there's not much after the limit. It's not a modern one of these modern F1 tracks with acres of nice, safe runoff. Uh, this, for example, uh, here, Surtees, very easy to go wide there. You can see the nice bit of exit curve there that the Aston in the background slightly takes, and it's very easy to go a little bit too wide there as you're trying to push. It's a bad camber on that corner, so you're pushed out to the side naturally just by the surface. I see on the grass again, a big amount of uh, exit curve for you to take there. Down into Hawthorne. One thing, just as a commentator, which, you know, is not important to most people, but is annoying to me, is that Brands Hatch is one of those tracks where no one can agree on what way to angle the track in maps. And the track map that I have up with the names of all the corners on is differently angled to the one in-game, which is a very frustrating. We come down now through Clark Curve, uh, and uh, Richard is actually going to bail out on that lap. So Wang, Grace, and uh, Koalas yet to set a time. Okay, there we go. There are two versions of Wang on here. Uh, something else that I, I, I would like uh, to point out that I'm just very happy about, which is a personal thing for me. We actually have both the Iron Lynx liveries in this. Uh, is it Trevinovich? No. Oh, he only drives a Ferrari. Is Dudley. Dudley. There we go. Dudley driving the Iron Dames car. And uh, Michael Wang right now out on the track for Pro-Ams driving the original Iron Lynx livery. So as always happens with the wet, we're going to see a lot of people taking a little bit of time to get comfortable in these conditions. And uh, a lot of people just going a little bit wide and uh, used to pushing to the edge and will be going off a little bit. Koala's in the Iron Lynx car, puts it up to 6th position, but still quite a way off of the pace. I... Okay, okay. Seems fine. That was me having a little bit of a lag there. I have no idea why, but... Um... My broadcast tool is still working. The stream is back up and OBS hasn't shown me an issue. And we're still in the server. That is not usually what happens when I lose internet for a moment. But uh, all is well. So we'll, we'll pretend like that didn't happen. Hopefully it won't happen again. Yeah. Very, very fast racing line. If you, if you avoid all of the, you know, the inclines and the, you know, the carousel of this track, then uh, you'll do very well. And talk about doing very well... Uh, Mark Benson just improved his time by a good amount. He's still... Uh, Jake, Joe Grace as well, setting the first up time for their team. Both of them still a uh, good ways behind the faster guys in this, but that's uh, a lot more on the pace. Coles and DeVries both need to do a little bit more. You see there, uh, just losing it a little bit out of Druids. 
Unfortunately, he's going to carry on with that lap just ahead of that Ferrari. He's going to be uh, a little bit annoyed, but he's just going to back off and try to find some space. Shouldn't be too hard to get space in here, uh, in this lobby with uh, so few people, but when you have differing speeds, it can still uh, come up a little bit. So Michael Wang team in the Iron Lynx, the last drivers yet to set a lap time. In the lower class, so it's not too much of a worry at this point. Like, uh, I'd set a bank a lap because De Vries's lap is, and even Cole's lap are pretty slow, and so it wouldn't be too hard to set a slow lap and get ahead of at least them. Unless they obviously improve, but getting a first lap in there just to be safe is going to be really nice. I hope he's going into the pits. Oh, that's a weird one. We're going to have to watch that again because that's a very strange incident. We have him just going very slow. Is he trying to let the car pass or is he just taking that very slow? Gets absolutely rammed off. It's a, a strange incident for sure. Oh yeah, that's a good point. This car, 82, is out in the wrong session. And so, uh, should be getting disqualified at some point. Has probably just been told to get off the track, and that's why he's dived off of the track. I think because there's so few people, uh, and we don't have, uh, we have life stewards, but they're, they're going to be sort of in and out throughout the race, dealing with uh, incidents that come up, not in there constantly. So there probably isn't a steward right there looking at everyone to uh, notice that. Technically, Victor Yanba should probably be getting disqualified for that, but I'm sure we'll go a little bit easy since it's uh, such a small grid and he wouldn't have gained anything for going out early, apart from getting one more lap one more chance to settle that. So Mark Benson coming in with another big improvement, although the top time has been improved. So he's actually going back to... He does uh, dip below the, the two seconds back. So uh, that's nice. He's crawling himself closer and keeping his team away from the back step. Joe Grace is behind him improving his time, but not enough right now to come out ahead. Gained a lot, actually, in the last corner there. Gained a lot through Clark. Still not quite going to be there, but a lot closer than it looked like it was going, which would make them price, improving his time as well, but still uh, a little bit longer before he can compete with someone. Uh, let's grab on with this Rich and make them price car as he comes past us. Up the hill of Surtees. Down through Pilgrims. I find it funny that so much of this track is named. Like, everything has a name. This corner is one that I'll definitely talk about a bit more once we have... Uh, once we watch a few more runs through there. Because it is a really incredible corner to take. A couple of the corners on here really have... Even though they look pretty simple, they have really interesting characteristics. I really hope my broadcast tool is going to reset once we get to the race, though, because there are a lot of people who've disconnected and left, left names on my broadcasting tool which aren't really there.
interesting to see how many people have gone off the track already. Still have a little bit of uh, time left. We've got normally we see a lot of people at the last moment when the track is at its driest, trying to push an extra time, but. Just Richard uh, Maitland Price, who's still out here, and it's coming down for 50 minutes, which means we're going to see our pro drivers leaving the pits. Oh, big slide there from the Bentley. Uh, Richard Mason Price is probably just going to dive into the pits here because he is nowhere near an improvement. You can just hear there the cars from the uh, other side of the track as Ashley Bloomfield leads them out. Interesting to see how tight some of these guys are packed up. Trying to get a bit of warmth into their tyres, get out there as quickly as possible to set as many laps, but we're going to have to seem spread apart a little bit, or uh, we're going to see a few of them losing each other time, which you don't want to see. I'd assume in these last few corners they'll back apart and leave a little bit more of a gap. See the, the 911 car doing that from the 240. And so here, we're going to come around the last corner. Got to keep as much speed through here as possible, but again, it cambers away from you, so you don't want to get pulled into the grass and gravel on the outside there. Braking sort of just as you come across where the pit line connects into uh, itself, and then get on the acceleration there, right out onto the edge of the track. A little bit of a wobble there, perhaps too much. Break under the bridge and throw yourself into the apex. Hang around get on the power as early as possible while you're still sort of turning and then it's a quick breakdown into here throw yourself in as early as possible so you can accelerate out onto the uh the slight run off there big breakthrough here another corner which is sort of awkward because you want to keep going but the camber isn't enough to really pull it with you and uh, this is the longest straight section on the track so you really need to get a good exit from there down to hawthorne this is a tiny break, and you start accelerating so far through the corner. It's not a sort of typical slow down, stop start corner. And then this one is a big cut, big push onto the outside curb. This one's going to be dangerous in the wet. And then immediately you're heading downhill. Uphill, over the crest, braking early, and then hitting that curb really hard to get across it fast. Bit of wiggle there as well. Ashley not quite capable of how much uh, grip he has here. Throw yourself through that last corner in uh, in Sterling. And then break just before that service road to throw yourself in again over that uncambered last corner to take the straight. Then for such a good time, John Dudley setting an even better time. Mihai going right to the top. And Ollie Henley takes the top spot. So rough, yeah. Thank you for your follow, buddy. Those of you who are, are new here, because we might have a few people who uh, don't normally see us on the weekends and are, uh, are looking for something to watch during this Monday evening. We are a set of course a competizione sim series. We are a league, a league for everyone, but a league that uh, was originally set up to be focused on uh, rookie and mid pack drivers, and we still uh, carry that as a, a torch for sort of learning and improving uh, in sim racing. This is our new GT series based around the British GT, where we are having driver swaps in short sprint races. We did a few of these sprint races to check and uh, to test driver uh, swaps for SGP and they were just very, very fun. And so we decided we needed to do more of them 
obviously with a lot of our organisers and members being British as well, it, it helps that we would all like to do some British TV, uh, British GT style events. So you watch the Meat Snacks Aston Martin finishing another lap, not quite making up time on that, but very close time, so setting two very good times in a row there is Andy Henley, really making himself look good for the race. So we normally run three events on uh, the weekend. We have a community event on Wednesday. Uh, the events on the, uh, the weekend are our main championship with three different uh, splits and we stream all of them. So uh, if you do want to be like DSRT Zvonimir and uh, you want to follow us, then you will get notifications when we go live on Friday, Saturday and Sunday most weeks. Uh, obviously, totally volunteer crew, so... We might not be able to keep up every week of streaming, but we'll be there as much as we can. So Dudley's got ahead of Ashley Bloomfield there, so uh, seems like Ashley Bloomfield made a little bit of a mistake, ruined his lap, and uh, has uh, put himself behind that Ferrari. Oh, but the Ferrari's going to go into the pits. So no worries about getting caught behind there for the uh, Aston Martin. Let's have a look at James Gibson. James Gibson uh, has uh, just set two pretty good laps in a row. Uh, his last one before this that he just finished was a 129.5, which puts him in second position, which amazingly, incredibly close to Mihai, but a whole half a second still off of Ollie Henley. Yes, yes. Uh, we had a little a little cool down recently, which was nice, but it's starting to get a bit warm again here in England, uh, which is which is fine. But uh, I'm I'm more of a cold boy myself, and obviously trying to do the sim, especially if you want to try out VR. It's uh, a little bit toasty for that, unfortunately. Really nice lap going on here from J. Oh. Oh, that was a curse. I'm sorry, James. Uh, that was bad timing. Annoyingly, the person who is setting an improved lap time near the front is Ollie Henley, who is already uh, five temps clear of the rest of the field, coming up here just behind Mihai in the 59 car. And uh, he's a good half second up again on his time, so he's going to be uh, taking almost a second advantage as Blumfield just cuts down... His half second advantage, he's just going to uh, regain that, reattain that right near the end. So now half a second to Blumfield, who himself is a good way ahead of Mihai, who also improved his time. So the times are getting better. Ludgate there, crossed the line right at the bottom as the lowest of the pros. But he is going to improve his time just a little bit. Him and Dravinovic still need to put in some work to beat the Ams. Dravinovic with a nice improvement there. Puts himself just behind the second of the Ams. Dixon Chen is... Uh, I, I remember seeing him in the, uh, the Saturday split. And I remember him uh, being talked as to someone who uh, perhaps should have been in pro. But uh, didn't quite qualify. So no surprise to see him up there with the uh, the fastest of them. Probably the most likely uh, team to see winning in Am, but I'm sure Benjamin Horiot will be uh, putting as much pressure on as they can. Good to see a lot of Ferraris here as well. Uh, we've we've had a distinct lack of Ferraris in in uh, some of our special events more recently. A lot of curb there from Tavrinovic. Puts himself wide, but a little bit slower. Not too much, though. A lot of curb again. That is got to be a cut, isn't it? It is not. That is totally allowed, apparently. That is a huge amount of cut there. I know you can cut it a lot, but that's pretty crazy. 
Unfortunately, it wasn't fast because he has lost all of his time through those two corners. And we'll be uh, coming across the line with an almost identical time to his last. But he's now set two of these very fast 130s in a row. And he's shown that he has the pace to uh, push a little bit further. So as we see him come through Paddock, he could definitely push a little more. Ferrari on the outside there. So he has been doing it. I said he had uh, a little bit more time off the stream. He's back up to even faster than he was last time we saw him come through here. A little bit less of a cut this time. Gets him a good run into this last corner, but on the grass and just throws it away so close. Once again, the penultimate corner before he, uh, he bends it. So not much time left, but Travinovic has shown that he has the pace to uh, catch up with the back of this pro pack he can just string a lap together the gate as well is down the back of the pack but is showing that he has the pace to improve his lap if he can just string together those last few corners and uh, once again Pushing a little bit too hard. Mihai there. Pushing equally hard. You can see him getting there and throwing away those last bits of time that he had gained. But he uh, still needs quite a bit to catch up to Bloomfield even. And a lot more to catch up to Henley. Oh! Both himself and Henley going wide there. And it seems like... Uh, a few of the slower drivers still have the possibility to push a little bit further. But uh, the drivers further back are struggling a bit. Michael Wang out on the track. Obviously in the wrong split, but we have heard from Alan Noah in the chat that his team had tech problems. So he is uh, out doing quali now and he will be soloing the whole race. Finovich have done it as well. Just caught that on my uh, broadcast tool at the end of that lap. Trifunovic comes through with a slight improvement. And just down through the first corner, he's already half a second up again. So he still has more pace in him if he can pull together a whole lap. Not slow, just a little bit inc uh, inconsistent around here from Trifunovic in the Porsche. Which I, I, I'm pretty sure is not his regular car. So I can imagine... Uh, you know, moving from the Ferrari to this might be a little bit of a test. Might be not quite as used to the consistency of it. see as he takes a lot of that curb the back of his car just gets a bit of a punt up into the air which loosens him into that last little short shoot and doesn't give him a great exit for sterlings he's got through there without losing too much time this time though and he will be making yet another improvement which will be putting him ahead of christie oh yeah lost a little bit through there but still fine still a good improvement from tofunovic up to fifth position Mihai now.
coming through with an improvement of his own. He needs a free tenth improvement to get into second position. And he's been hovering around that now, pushing up to four and rarely five tenths. Six tenths ahead as he comes into Sterling. Really smooth through there. Doesn't quite use all of the track that he can use. Loses a little bit of time down the straight due to that. Then nice and smooth through the last corner. And that's a really big improvement. Not enough to topple Ollie Henley. But we'll put him right up there with him. Oh, Ollie Henley bins it as well. Uh, had just set his last time, so couldn't improve anymore. Ludgate out on track. Near the end of the lap already. So it's going to be difficult to gain any time from here. He's one-tenth up. Oh, he's not quite a tenth up, but he is up on his time. Depending on how he did through that last corner, he might be able to make it a nice, clean grid here with all the pros ahead of all the pro-ams. And he's done that, apart from Richard Smith, who has been in and out of the server, and I'm not sure what has actually happened with him. So here we go. Um... Bandit driver development had problems and cannot race. Is that these guys? I can't really tell their team name right now, but as they seem to not be there, I will assume that it is those guys. So Ollie Henley is on pole. Uh, he is going to be teamed up for Christopher Meadows. I don't know who's starting or how the rules are for that, so we'll have to just see that when it comes. Mihai and David Long in the next team. Daniel Terry and Ashley Bloomfield in third. And there's the rest of your field. Andrea Dixon, Chen and McKenna leading the AM field ahead of Benjamin Horiot and Yunus Coviesto. Alan Noah and Richard Maitland Price in the Bentley in third, making a much more varied amateur split. <laughs>
you can see on the left side of our screen there, the car 240 has apparently been having engine cutouts. Thank you to Paul Glover, our pit reporter right now. Uh, and his engine kept stopping and he couldn't get back up the order before being teleported. So as our grid comes around the final corner to start, they will be going from the pits. Oli Henley on pole, Mihai in second, James Gibson in third. As our drivers pile into the first corner. Good start there for the Mercedes. Good braking there for Mihai, but he uh, maybe a little bit too late into there. Gets a nice run, but the uh, Aston Martin of Henley is in his way. Takes the inside line, and the Mercedes tries to dive up into the middle. A little bit of chaos here as everyone's trying to sort of dodge Mihai. Mihai gets back on, but is going too wide and punts one of the McLarens off, who is now losing a few places. Sits in in front of... Uh, I believe that'll be Horiot in the Alexis, and they managed to uh, not go into the back of Mihai. So a disastrous start for both uh, Mihai's team and the Dan Terry Ashley Bloomfield team. Bit of a bad exit from there as well. Puts the Lexus on the back foot, but the Lexus might not uh, be wanting to make any dangerous moves, knowing that it is a pro driver in front of him. Uh, as we look at the order, though, he is uh, he did put himself on the inside there, which I'm not sure is super smart when you are leading your own category. With no one ahead of you to uh, really worry you any further. Ollie Henley is piling up the road now. James Gibson still in second, but likely to take a penalty for that incident. Leaves Trevunovic and Christie in the podium as we go so far. And Benjamin Horiot threatening Mihai all the way around. Again, yeah, I don't think it's very smart from Benjamin to keep doing this because he's putting himself in bad positions through these corners of falling back. And he's falling back for somebody who doesn't even need to overtake. Someone like Mihai who's incredibly fast diving down the inside of Ludgate in the Ferrari. Uh, Benjamin, if he calms down here, if people get in the rhythm, he should not be getting held up too much by these. He is going to dive Ludgate, who is the slower of the pros. It makes a little bit more sense to try and get around him, to be fair. Now that... Coming up to Drew is with Mihai ahead, starting a battle back from almost last of his field, but not quite last because obviously a Dan Derry team is. They have taken uh, Alec de Vries at the back of this field, however. So we're going to get to see a bit of a fight back coming from Ashley as the Ferrari of Colas goes live, uh, goes wide. Great exit from there now, right up behind Mark Benson. Not expecting to see too many of these Zams fighting this. They know Ashley Bloomfield is a fast boy and they're not going to want to get in his way too much. That's a very dangerous place to make a move though, so smartly Ashley backs out of it. But then it's very frustrating because he is being definitely being held up by Benson through there. Benson going a lot slower than Ashley knows he can go. Going to dive down here into Dinkledell, but backs out. Not brave enough to uh, make the move. Mark Benson likely not going to fight this, but uh, not going to just give up anyway. Goes a bit wide there, but actually can't make use of it because he also had a little bit of a wiggle on the exit of that. He'll definitely get in here. That was such a better exit. Such a better exit through Clark. Easy overtake before he's even got to the first corner now. And we might even get to see a dive on Wang going into Druids. Looks to the inside, but just not quite close enough. Slightly further up the field as well. A battle for position. Alan Noah is chasing down Chris McKenna in the McLaren for second position in class. There we go. Actually did dive ahead of that Ferrari. So these are our two battles to keep an eye on so far. Looks like also uh, Mark Benson might be close behind... Uh, oh, Ashley Bloomfield, what has happened here? In the replay, Ashley Bloomfield, is he going to make one? Oh no, the Audi in front of him just makes a mistake at that corner and is wiggling on the road. So just unfortunate coming across that Audi right there in his path. 
He's going to have to get past this Ferrari once again as Alan Noah challenging around the outside into the first corner, going really wide there. But you can. You're losing all that runoff, which is absolutely okay. Puts him on the outside, though, for Druids, which is going to be hard. Try in with a switchback, but you can't really get a switchback around Druids because you stay so tight for so long. Now he's just uh, a bit all over the track, trying to get his traction back up and get running again. But he seems to have the pace on McKenna, at least now. McKenna, even there, seeming a bit worried. Pushing his car in defensive positions, even when he doesn't really have to. Further up, Benjamin Horriot has found himself behind the next pro Ferrari and is making a dive on him as well. Pretty dangerous place to do so, as I said, and not really a good place because, yeah, you can get on the inside of him really easy there, but like I was saying when we were looking at the qualifying laps, it's a lot faster through there than you really expect, and he can just hold so much more speed than you can, and so what are you going to do? Put yourself on the inside, and then you also put yourself being slow. Here we go. We'll have a little look back in the replay here to see how Alan Noah did it on Chris McKenna coming up into the same corner but he has done what is better to do Chris McKenna here making the mistake of trying to go defensive this isn't a corner you go defensive into because as I said you put yourself on the inside you go a little bit slower he has a bad exit through there goes wide trying to carry the speed and then oh, just breaking too late into the next corner unfortunately and so Alan Noah takes a bit of an easy victory there Ashley Bloomfield is back on the tail of that Ferrari we were talking about. Not going to get a dive into Druids. Druids does seem like the easiest place to dive, but a lot of people break vertically in that section, so it is a little bit dangerous to have a, a go of it there. As at the back, we have Coles trying to chase down Benson as well. Benjamin ahead of Richard Christie now, so he has made that stick. A lot of dust there being kicked up by Chris McKenna. As long as you can keep it stable, you won't lose too much time going through the grass there. Charlie Henley is still leading with quite a gap to Gibson and then Trifonovic. Trifonovic being chased by Mihai, who was <coughs> punted on that first lap and is making a bit of a charge back. Benjamin Horriot, really impressive, taking out the back few pro drivers. Christy and Ludgate still pretty close together at the back of that pro field. Alan Noah then a big gap between him and uh, anyone else ahead of him. Chris McKenna a little while back. And then M. Wang is being chased down here, as we can see by Bloomfield with Benson and Grace fighting for a position behind this. And Coles and DeVries at the back of the field. Ferrari there going a little bit slow. Again, going defensive into uh, Hawthorne, which is not the way to do it. But he gets back just in time. Actually, Bloomfield going for the inside is just going to tip the car out. No one in this lobby knows how to overtake through Hawthorne. And it's slightly triggering me. Oh, there's a McLaren off there as well. That was Chris McKenna. So uh, with that uh, move on Wang, he's also got a free one on Chris McKenna. So he's up to ninth position now. Uh, but you, you do not go on the inside of that corner because you, you just can't. You don't have any speed. As soon as that car was uh, trying to defend against him, he should have just gone for the outside and just taken the faster line. If they want to try and stick themselves on the inside of that corner, let them do it and just drive around the outside of them because it's it's not helping. Uh, so, Bloomfield still carrying on this. He's, he's ahead of most of the AMs now, but is likely going to be uh, hit with a penalty. Might take a little bit while for him to get his penalty, though, because right now, um, unless there are other stewards in there who might be, I do not have the Discord up open to check. Um, but unless there are other stewards in there, Shane Thomas might be helping 
but the main two stewards for this day are going to be Dan Terry and Ollie Henley. So uh, Ashley might have to wait until Ollie Henley is out of the car in order to get his penalty, because obviously Dan Terry will not be adjudicating anything that involves the car 240, and Ollie Henley will not be adjudicating anything that involves the car 808. So unless they get someone like Shane on the case, uh, well, that penalty is going to take a while to come in, but I mean, I think we all saw uh, pretty sure that one's going to come. Possible that they'll see that the Ferrari uh, pulled, uh, turned over on him too late or something. That is, that is a, a possibility, but uh, we'll have to see. Me high on Trofinovic is the next one where we might see someone picking up the order because uh, she actually has quite a while before he gets to the next Yam drives. Big slide there from Me high, really pushing to try and make some of this time back. 15 seconds for Gibson is quite a lot as well. I wonder if that might mean they're using our, our team stewarding sheet uh for teams it's normally set penalties for each incident that you uh seem to have caused so uh yeah pavel in the chat is telling us shane thomas is looking looking into it so uh, we do have an extra steward to make this take a little bit less time robert colas from the back of chris mckenna now interesting chris mckenna was the uh, mclaren who we saw spinning ahead of this mark benson has pulled away from him so he did not have the pace in order to pass him chris uh, mark benson actually coming up onto uh michael wang These are the big two uh, contests for space we have right now. Now we actually have another. Oh, as Mihai tries for himself up the inside on Druids, which is, uh, like I said, a little bit dangerous. Um, we also have Ludgate, who is right behind Christy. This is the one that I didn't notice before. The two pro Ferraris are uh, pretty close on it still. Then right at the back. Colas, Grace, and McKenna. McKenna, I expect to pull away since he was a little bit faster. But could have taken some damage. Might have taken, even if it's not damage to the car, it might be just a little bit of ego damage. Benson cruising up towards Wang, but Wang set his fastest lap of the race last lap, so he's not going to be uh, caught without a fight here. And I have an interesting idea. Let's sit on side, sit on board with Mihai. And the reason I'm going to do this, yeah, this is on PC, correct the screen, yeah. The reason I'm going to do this is to talk about why it's so hard to overtake at Brands. Um, We'll, we'll ignore the first corner for now and go for Druids. As actually, I might just see the overtake of Druids. But this is basically the way you overtake on this track, right? Is uh, through Druids, if someone makes a mistake at the first corner, or if you can get inside in the first corner, put them off their line. Uh, because for a lot of the other corners on the track, literally no one's overtaking each other and as soon as I want to make a point everyone starts overtaking each other Cola's now going around the side of McKenna it's going to be a tricky one this is exactly what I'm talking about putting your opponent off their line into the first corner can give you the opportunity to go up side by side into Druids McKenna comes a little bit over and taps the Ferrari the Ferrari going wide McKenna has the inside but goes way too fast into it a little bit of a lag spike there for him as well or a little bit of a tap side by side as well that was really close to uh, Cola's getting turned around there on the front of Grace Let's sit on board with Trifunovic this time then. Uh, hopefully he'll keep up with Mihai at least enough for us to uh, get some uh, good examples out of this. So coming through the first corner, the first corner is probably the best overtaking opportunity because you do stick out wide and if you can put yourself on the side, you're slowing down quite a bit so you can get on that big gap there on the inside 
and uh, take the apex, force them to stay out wide. You do lose a little bit of speed, but you don't get the done there. You get the job done into Druids, which as you can see, Mihai didn't do it as much there. He went in a little bit wide, but people break diagonally into that corner. And so it's very hard to find space. This corner is just too fast to throw yourself up the inside of there. But people break diagonally into Druids, which means it's incredibly hard to find space. This is probably the second best overtaken opportunity because you can see how wide he goes. If you can get on the inside of there and then go wide and just sort of block the other cars. Mihai gets on the grass there. Really dangerous. And now uh, we're going towards Hawthorne and we're going to see the problems of overtaking there if Trofanovic tries. Because again, you need to stay out around the outside to get the most speed. You cannot take a tight line through there at any sort of speed. Here, again, if you try and dive in the middle there, you just have your nose chopped off. Uh, up here, again, really fast corner. You can dive in there and force them off, but you're going to be so slow out of there and you're probably just going to get your nose chopped off here. It's just too short of a straight to really dive. And then this corner, you can, if your opponent gets a bad exit, you can sort of make a move here because it's a decent corner for it. But again, the straight's just a bit short for it, so... That's why it's really hard to overtake here. There's lots of sort of opportunities, but a lot of people, uh, a lot of lines that you take just turn in on your opportunity to uh, overtake. So it really is, you put them off balance at turn one and then dive them into Druids. Or you uh, take a really, you, you threaten them through Druids and then take a really nice line through Graham Hill at the bottom of Druids and dive them into Surtees. And the rest of the track is just, the whole GP circuit is just about getting back to the Indy loop to make that move. So as has been said in chat, Ollie Henley being pretty boring up the front, just winning and stuff, just driving. Team Shane Thomas out here, with Ollie Henley and uh, Chris Meadows. Hopefully Chris Meadows can get in there and bottle it for us so we can have a bit more entertainment. But for now, Ollie Henley running quite a way up front. James Gibson in the second place has a 15 second penalty. So Mihai, who's managed to work himself all the way back up to third, is gaining his position back on Gibson. Gibson turned Mihai at the first corner to receive that penalty. Mihai has then had a really nice uh, drive so far. He's passed Trevinovich and is now just slowly starting to pull away from him. Trevinovich still holding on to a, an honourable place there. As Horiot behind them has really met his match here. He passed two of the pro drivers uh, early on and uh, has had a really storming start but the drivers ahead of him are just faster than him uh, it seems Christy starting to pull back as well had set a really nice lap uh, last lap the last two laps have been uh, right up there with Benjamin Horia and uh, a little bit faster than him at times so uh, Still going to stick in there. Ashley Blumfield now has just taken Alan Noah. We could actually probably uh, hop into a replay and see how that happened. Oh, Ferrari off there a little bit awkwardly. Alan Noah taking the inside line is a little bit slow towards the last corner. Ashley's going to pack up just behind him. And then Alan Noah just bad, uh, bad run there through the last corner. He's just going to let Ashley pass before he has to really make any sort of move by himself. So Ashley Bloomfield, his engine was cutting out on the uh, parade lap, and so uh, he was f had to. He was forced to make a pit start. Alan Noah then behind him is in second position in silver and is doing really well after everyone else in silver has uh, has binned it in the form of Chris McKenna or has just ran off with it in the form of Benjamin Horriot. Ludgate, the last of the pros, and we have Wang, Grace. Mark Benson, who has been sort of slowly kind of catching Grace, I think. Uh, they've both had a few good and bad laps, so it's hard to really keep a direct com uh, comparison lap time-wise. But overall, that's getting closer. And then Chris McKenna and Coles have been fighting and Coles, uh, ever since Chris McKenna spun out of third place in his uh, position. And then we have Alec De Vries uh, bringing up the back of the field for us. You see him there just getting lapped by James Gibson in second position. Once again, thank you to everyone who's uh, watching us today. If you're new here, as this is the first time we've streamed on Monday. Uh, we normally stream Friday, Saturday, Sundays with our main championship.
Okay. I, I have seen that people have asked for a little bit more volume in chat. I will put it up a little bit, but I want to wait to make sure that these guys aren't fighting too much here. Yep, so Donzy DW, thank you for uh, following. If any of you want to follow, you can catch our streams on normal Friday, Saturday, Sunday streams, or any more Monday streams if we uh, get around to doing more of them. If you guys enjoy these streams and we get uh, enough people uh, excited for the GT Championship, uh, that'll be great. And if you want to join, remember exclamation mark, sign up in the chat. Puts us to Discord, as our good Pavel has just done. All right, now I'm going to up the sound for you guys. Um... 10% you asked for is technically that, right? But I'll, I'll go a little bit higher just for you. I'll go, what would it be, the equivalent of like 25%. Smithles of the Prime as well, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for uh, showing some support for us. Yep, as Pavel points out in the chat, community race at Kyalami this Wednesday. So if you want to come and join there, it's totally open. Uh, isn't as hard to join as our other championships and if we get enough people driving in that every week then we might start up a few more community races as Chris McKenna and Cola is still having a nice little fight at the back of the field here Cola's going a little bit wide there but again it's not bad at that corner you can carry a lot of speed through there Chris McKenna managing to make that tighter line work So, we are 20 minutes into this hour-long race at Brands Hatch. This is a driver swap race inspired by the British GT, so eventually a load of these drivers will be pitting to swap over to their teammates, and this uh, will be the thing that adds a bit more spice back into this race. By this time, we've had most people uh, really set out into their sort of, you know, everyone sort of where they deserve to be in terms of pace uh, for most of the, the field. Although, has Blumfield just had an incident? Because he, I feel like, should be higher up than that. Or am I confused? Because he's taken a long while to get up anyway. But yeah, that should be the thing that spices up this race halfway through. It's obviously the advantage of these driver swap races. As James Gibson, we're going to have to have a look at this. Because he is now being chased down by Mihai hit into the replay and see what happened to him. James Gibson uh, turned Mihai around at the first corner, and there he is turning himself around, just taking a little bit too much speed into that nice little spin there to get out of it. That's a very smart move. And then not too much drive on the side there, and you can see Mihai just right behind him. Mihai turned around and sent to the back of the grid by him. Well, not the back of the grid, but uh, the back of the pro grid at least, and behind a couple of... Uh, or just in front of the first arm he was, wasn't he? And so, uh, yeah, Mihai was turned around by James Gibson at the end. That's why James Gibson has his 15-second penalty. And Mihai has now managed to climb his way all the way back up through the uh, through the field. And after that mistake, he's challenging Gibson. Trifunovic is the driver in the Porsche behind. He held off Mihai for quite a while before getting overtaken and has kept a pretty good pace up with Mihai. Mihai only pulling away very short. So this is the exciting battle now. We obviously have that battle we were looking at before uh, with Chris McKenna and Coles, although it looks like Wang has taken the first run into the pit lane. Shumably to swap out for his teammate. Coles still on the back, uh, or still chased by Chris McKenna and Ludgate on the back of uh, Noir. Alan Noah. Uh, not fighting for position, those guys.
So from what Pavel's saying, it looks like I was right when I thought that Ashley Bloomfield had been thrown down the field. Looks like they might have got themselves in another incident. I don't see any of it though. Interesting, pit window has just opened. So, um, we saw Wang in the pits earlier. See how now he is back out, right at the back of the field. Interesting that they have uh, a short little pit window and they're in there before. Maybe they didn't know that there was a pit window. Looks like Grace has got in just at the start of the pit window. McKenna coming in as well, trying to get the damage fixed up on those slightly bad cars and perhaps throw. Uh, a faster driver in the car, maybe. Yeah, Pavel was baiting me. So, uh... It's okay, you know, sometimes you just got to do that to me. Was one lap short on fuel. Oh, that's tragic. That's really unlucky there for the number 55 Ferrari car, if that is the case. We have one for going in the chat as well. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, here we have Mihai chasing down James Gibson. For that second place, James Gibson, who turned me high around on the first corner. I think it was the first corner, or was it going into Druids? It was on the first lap, anyway. And Mihai has now managed to cap up after James Gibson spun himself in the latter half of the circuit. And Mihai is getting really close now, really on the raggedy edge here. James Gibson, with that 15 second penalty, he will have to serve in the pits. So. Might be a good idea for uh, Mihai to jump out of uh, the car soon because you're going to 100% make that overtake in the pits. So rather than taking a few slow laps behind here, you could throw the other driver in. But then uh, if the other driver is deemed to be slower than Mihai, that might be a bad idea. Although it's David Long. I don't think David Long is, is slower than Mihai by a, a large amount. So I would suggest that Mihai should be pitting. That would be my strategic advice for the team. We already discussed how Brands Hatch is a difficult track to overtake on. De Vries at the bottom with a stop go 30. Um, that must be for speeding in the pits. So... Uh, unfortunate situation there and there we go we've had our first few driver swaps done Chris McKenna has handed over to Andrea Dixon Chen very fast driver in that McLaren should hopefully be able to pull them up the field a little bit set their qualifying time right at the front of this pro-am pack um, but then uh, is now going to have to make it work again. Ludger and Kolez both in the pits as well. And Mihai once again does not pit. So uh, Victor Yanber in there for Travunovic as well. So he's sort of putting his nose in there. But the cars dive across to the inside of Druid so quickly. There's really not much space to do that. Mills that is now in the 68 Ferrari as well. And Christy in the 911 Ferrari is in the pits as well. Oh, and there we go. James Gibson goes wide, loses the position to Mihai. So 
so it was a little bit of a, a risk to stay out there losing time, but uh, you're not losing a ton of time behind a driver as fast as Gibson, and Gibson did in, end up making the mistake to throw him out of the way. Mihai dragging his uh, pit out as long as possible. So the 911 car is now right behind the meat snacks liveried car of 808. So that is Ollie Henley. Uh, so Dudley has just been lapped by Ollie Henley, who is still yet to pit. Victor Yanba in the 82 car is down the road and round the next corner. One car there spun off. That's Coles, his teammate Ashim now in the car. Alan Noir in the Bentley and Mark Benson in one of the Aston Martins in silver. Both have jumped into the pit now as well. We're getting towards the end of the pit window, so we're going to see a lot of people diving in there soon. Yeah, Richard Maitland Price now in the 888. Bentley has just left the pit lane. So Paul Glover in the chat is telling us Ash pitting next lap, Ollie pitting now. Um, I assume everyone is going to be pitting uh, next lap because that is pretty much the last lap that you're going to get time to pit on to uh, serve your uh, your mandatory pit stop. Ollie Henley already in the pits. He's likely to put Mihai and Gibson into the lead unless they dive in as well. Oh, there we go, James. Gibson into the pits. Mihai going to leave it till the last lap. No chance of any shenanigans going on in the pits here, because obviously they have that 15-second time penalty. Alan Noah in the chat after finishing his stint in the AA8 as uh, three more of our drivers pit. As I said, everyone going to be pitting now. Good job, buddy. The AA8 Bentley still in second place uh, having pit. Benjamin Horrock just coming out of the pits now, but he's very far ahead. Paul Glover here just being rude to our friend Chris Meadows. But even if Chris Meadows doesn't spin, it is true that Chris Meadows is a lot slower than... Uh, well, everyone is a lot slower than Ollie Henley uh, on this in this race, it seems. But he's a lot slower than Ollie Henley. So uh, hopefully, as we see Mihai pitting, this could be the impetus for some more interesting situations in this race. As Michael Wang, Joe Grace, and uh, Montalavo are the last to not have pit. Uh, Montalavo are actually taking place from his teammates. So they have pit, but they... Uh, haven't completed their mandatory. They probably didn't change tyres because they probably changed tyre in their first pit. 
So, uh, yeah, a little bit tragic for those guys. And there we go. Michael Wang into the pit. Joe Grace, I'm sure, will be squeezing in next. He's actually got very little time to make it. They might have left this too long. Three, two, one. And he's actually just staying out. What are you doing? The pit window's closed. I don't think he would have made it anyway going in there, but he's still there. He's having too much fun fighting with Dixon Chen. And this must be frustrating for Dixon Chen now, because now we're getting held up for no reason. Now we're getting held up by someone who isn't even in the race anymore. So let's have a, a, a check throughout the field. Chris Meadows now leading in the 808 Meat Snacks uh, Aston Martin with David Long taking up Mihai's car, who's just coming through Druids. Has quite a way to make up, but if David Long uh, can be faster than Chris Meadows, he can do that. Victor Yanba in the next car now is uh, driving the 82 Porsche. Uh, Jonas Coviesto has taken over from Benjamin Horiot in the Lexus. John Dudley in the Ferrari just behind him, both uh, with that back marker be between them. Mikael Roed has taken over from James Gibson. After that 15 second time penalty, we're going to have to hope that he's as fast as Gibson or faster for their own sake because he has some time to make up. Dan Terry has taken over from Ashley Bloomfield of a similar situation in terms of penalties. He's now just ahead of Richard Maitland Price, who's coming around the corner in the Bentley just behind him, but is, of course, a class behind. Milstead has now taken over the last of the pros with Tom Tweedy in the golf liveried uh, Aston that's just chasing down our leader. Uh, Andrea Jokin Chen has just got past Joe Grace. Oh, and then he's binned it into the first corner. He's going to catch it. He just catches it before going into the grass. That is going to let this uh, Audi come right past him again. He stayed a bit too wide, so he's not able to cut him off, but he is going to take that position there. Not going to go side by side, so we can try and go back and uh, and we can at least see that uh, first incident again. Really nice work there. Really calm. Really clean just to get that out of there. But again, this must be super frustrating for Dixon Chen because he, he doesn't need to be fighting uh, Joe Grace because Joe Grace has failed to do his pit stop. We've actually had three cars who haven't done their pit stop, which is uh, tragic for those guys. And, uh, but uh, so is the complexities of uh, team racing in here sometimes. Tom Tweedy has just got past, uh, just unlapped himself from uh, Chris Meadows. Is Chris Meadows going to... No, Chris Meadows is now just sitting in behind him. So let's see what happens here. Chris Meadows is just, I assume, going to make a mistake out of this corner. Just takes it a little bit slow, and Tom Tweedy is feeling like he is faster. Obviously, he's lapped by this car because of the stellar work that uh, Henley put in. And it looks like Chris Meadows let him pass there, honestly. So I think Chris uh, also thinks that Tom is a bit faster than him and doesn't want to uh, lose any time trying to keep a car behind him that he's not even racing with. So this allows Tom to head up the road. Milstead, you can see just there, the Ferrari in the distance is racing Tom Tweedy, so uh, Tom Tweedy is going to want to uh, get a move on and get onto the back of that car. So now this gets us to the part where that makes these races so good. Obviously, uh, longer races with less cars on the track seems like a bad idea. Seems like you'll get less action, but having the uh, teammates really mixes it up. It doesn't help too much when your team is just two good drivers, but when you get more mixed skill teams, you can get really fascinating uh, things happen where uh, a car will fall back throughout the first stint, but then be able to pull back from the second stint and vice versa. Chris Meadows... Not the fastest driver in the car right now, but he has a big lead built up by Ollie Henley as Dan Terry goes off there. 
make them price real close onto the back of him. And this all comes down again to uh, how Maitland is feeling about his race because on the one hand you don't want to lose time fighting Dan Terry if you don't think you're going to catch Coviesto. But Coviesto doesn't seem to be as fast as Horiot was and uh, isn't that far ahead of them now. So if Dan Terry is not going to manage to pass Coviesto, Maitland Price might want to get past him so that he can have a go. Here it is, Tom Tweedy. Chris Meadows was right to let him pass because Tom Tweedy has pulled a big gap onto him and is now right on the back of Jake Milstead. Once again, not a driver that he uh, actually personally has to race. Um, and there is a big gap between Milstead and Maitland Price. Um, I'd say it's unlikely he's going to cover that gap, but you know he at least wants to try. If he can get ahead of Milstead, he can start pulling in that gap a little bit if he's got the pace he was faster than maitland price and terry by almost a second last lap so tom tweedy giving us some interest flying from the back yeah i have called it the south african livery before it's it's not the most south african livery on there it does have the British flag on top, obviously, but uh, it is from the Kaya Lamy 12 hour, I believe, or 8 hour. Whichever one that is from International GT last year. So you see the South African flag on the GT written on the side. Is a nice livery for sure. Uh, Maitland Price getting a little bit wiggly there, losing a little bit of time on Dan Terry. Milstead and Tom Tweedy both uh, doing faster laps than Dan and Rich right now, although Dan. Last time set a better lap. So uh, perhaps getting into the groove of this tricky circuit a little bit. Tom Tweedy now has caught up to Milstead and interestingly is struggling to get past. And that is slowing him down so that Chris Meadows can catch back up to him again. Once again, we're going to get to uh, have a nice look at how difficult it can be to overtake on this track. Ooh, a little bit too wide into there by Tom Tweedy. much CJ for uh, but McKenna subscribing to us to avoid those pesky ads thank you very much oh a little bit too hard into the first corner there as well Tom Tweedy caught up very fast getting a little jink there to keep uh, Meadows away and that's actually absolutely wrecked him concentrating more on defending from Meadows than taking the corner and Meadows is straight past again That's really put Tom Tweedy off of his uh, off of his run now. So we've got a little bit of action back here as well. What is this? This is uh, Joe Grayson and Aston. Is that David Long? That is the 59 car of David Long. So he's going to jump past... 
Joe Grace there, and that was a 99 car. So this is actually three different cars on three different laps, just uh, trying to get around each other. They have sorted themselves out into a more sensible order. Ruben Ashim in the Ferrari Team E1 here has uh, caught up to Michael Wang as well, so he's going to be having a go at him. Both of these Ferraris seem to lose quite a bit in the uh, pit phase, and Wang obviously not completing their pit properly as well. A little bit too much to be taken in there by Ashim. Yanba also lapping a car there. There we go. Sheen with a nice clean move there on the inside. Going to pull away from the two Iron Lynx Ferraris. Dudley, I believe, in the 911, there is the, uh, the Pink Iron Dames car, so he's going to want to get through these guys soon. Blue flags will be being waved. And there's the main Iron Lynx car off. Look at that. Nice safe line there by Dudley, not taking any chances. Jumps on the inside to make sure he can get through safely. Unless something has happened, it looks like uh, Pavel is, is trying to bait me again. But uh, Dan Terry just behind uh, Coviesto. Oh, Coviesto going really wide again. So Dan Terry is going to get straight through here. That's made it nice and safe. <laughs> oh yeah, not in the same class there, obviously, but uh, does get P6 overall now. So he can try to chase on Raid. Yeah, so obviously, um, faster driver in that Lexus team was the first driver, Benjamin Horiot. Now, Coviesto taking that lead has lost it slightly down to Maitland Price. Lost it all down to Maitland Price, really, now, who's right behind him. Nice run through the first turn there for Maitland Price. Being nice and safe here. Knows he has time. Ten minutes left in this race. But this is the fight for the lead now in the Prime class. And slightly further back we have Andrea Dixon Chen in the 169 fighting for the last position of the podium. A lot of time for David Long to make up on Chris Meadows. For that win to become a possibility, but these two fights in Pro Am keeping it interesting. Backmark is now getting involved as well in this fight. 99 car going wide, making sure he can let the other two pass without taking too much time, but uh, not with without the backmarker doing anything wrong. Maitland Price just got a little bit more unlucky there than Coviesto.
A lot of dust being kicked up in front of them by Daniel Terry. Back to Dixon Chen, and there is more possible back mark trouble here. Although these actually aren't back markers, are they? So this is the interesting difference with this fight. Tom Tweedy is once again coming up to the back of... Uh, is that Milstead? I think that is Milstead in the 68. In ninth position, that is. So that is another fight for position. It's not for position in class, but Milstead still might not want to give that one up. And he doesn't need to give that one up. So he's going to start slowing Tom Tweedy down into this battle with Dixon Chen. And then just ahead of them is Chris Meadows, who is out in the lead. Richard Maitland Price. I did Coviesto lose it there. He went onto the grass a little bit. Seems like he had to slow down there. Bad last corner again is what lets down Coviesto. This is twice in a row. He has been let it down. And that right there is the overtake for the lead of uh, the Pro-Am class by Richard Maitland Price. DT, it seems, got a similar overtake on Reed, who also made a mistake there. So he's soared up into fifth position. A couple of mistakes leading to position changes on this last lap. Coviesto now uh, chasing down the Bentley. Dan oh, Tom Tweedy right up on the back of that Ferrari. This is, again, for overall position, but points-wise, Tom Tweedy just wants to get ahead of this Ferrari to avoid being overtaken by Dixon Chen for the podium. It's always the worst position being in the middle of these sort of sandwiches because any move you make that doesn't go off, you don't have a, as much of a chance to reassess and re-come at the situation because you have a car behind waiting for any opportunity to take that momentum. And you can see they are now all right together here. Tweedy with a slightly better exit. Weaving a bit behind the Ferrari. He's going to try and get a good run around the last corner and dive into the first corner. This is his big chance. You see, this is a good example of where you can get really interesting... Uh, where you get more important corners than others somehow. Because we saw Coviesto twice now. Doing decent laps but making a hash into the last corner as the Ferrari jumps out the way there. Looks like he lost it and had to just catch a snap and that has just put him behind these two. But Milstead just doing that last corner correctly, even though he was slower than the cars uh, behind him, meant that he could uh, hold on to that position until he made a mistake later on. And now Tom Tweedy has been released. Chris Meadows a little bit up the road from here. That didn't look good from Tom Tweedy, but not really a place to overtake around here. He takes it kind of tight. Doesn't want to leave any space on the inside at all, but in doing so, he is putting himself right into the back of this McLaren. Needs to, again, some corners are more important than others. He needs to get a good exit out of these two corners, and as long as he does that, he'll be safe. There we go. Good run through there. No chance of the McLaren diving him into turn one. No chance of him putting Tom Tweedy off his line into the second corner as long as he doesn't make the same mistake that Milstead made down here, and he doesn't. He is now nice and safe for another lap. Further forward as well, which would make them Price, who is now leading the Pro-Am split, is chasing down Raid. Raid. Ooh, a little bit of a dangerous rejoin there. But uh, doesn't hit anyone. It snaps up the car. And Richard Maitland Price is looking to just get a, a glory overtake here on the, the last few laps of this race. Needs to be careful, though. Doesn't want to make uh, any move that he doesn't need to make. Because that is not for positioning class, obviously. Still uh, overall position, so he wants to get it done.
Tom didn't look like he had quite so good a run out the last corner there. Dixon Chen putting some pressure on him. Did Tom take too much of an inside line there? Still looks like he has a decent amount of pace out the corner. Stays tight for the hairpin. Doesn't go wide. He's all safe. Oh, and a big wiggle there from Dixon. Tries to catch that up. Stays ahead of Milstead. And uh, he's back in the fight, but he's a little bit further behind now. Back onto Richard Maitland Price coming into the last corner. Yeah, Smithfield's pointing out that Milstead is uh, a bronze driver. So, uh, for those who don't know, how the uh, classes work is that your class is determined by your highest driver. It is not uh, some sort of uh, equalization of both of your drivers, which I think it probably should be, but that would be a, a little bit more work. So it is just to keep it nice and simple, it's just your highest driver is your class. So uh, some of these pro classes are two pro drivers or a pro and a gold. Uh, very few of them have more mixed uh, driver pairings. The uh, Milstead pairing is much more close to the Cobbiisto pairing, uh, I think, than it is to uh, any of the pro pairings. So he's still uh, doing a good job, even though he's a bit further down the field. And he's keeping up here with uh, Andrea Dixon Chen. Horio is pro, yes. He... Uh, he specifically asked if they could be put down because he saw the exact same problem with the format that we have been talking about. Uh, so I believe if Milstead and his teammate had asked to be put down into silver because of the uh, difference, they would have been, but they just didn't ask. And so uh, they didn't get it. We might be able to make that sort of more clear of a rule in the future. Um, or we might be able to just... Uh, change how we do the splits slightly on this but uh, as you can see by the overall splits it's generally worked so as a quick and easy way of doing things uh, it's not bad it's just uh, obviously not perfect road still being chased down by Maitland Price Oh, big mistake there from Road as well, and that has let Maitland Price past. Very uh, easy corner to make that mistake there. The main reason we don't have a GT4 class in this, although it is sort of inspired by um, British GT, and as you say, they do have a GT4 class, is, yeah, literally just what you said at the end there. It, it's nothing to do with the carnage, but it's just there's not enough people who want to do it. It's hard enough to find... It's hard enough to make a GT4 class without team racing, honestly. Oh, big slide there from Milstead, but he uh, holds it up. Final lap then, uh, as we're coming to the end of this. Chris Meadows is leading in the Kings meets Nat Car. Would it be too late to ask to go to Silver if you have a big driver gap? I, I'd assume not. I'd assume not. It's, uh, I believe, more of a series than a championship this, so uh, we're not going to be uh, too strict on it, I'd assume. Uh, if it makes the, uh, the competition better, it suits the competition, then uh, I'm sure... 
people can get moved around. This isn't the main championship series where you're you're stuck to what you're do. I, I would think. I'm not directly involved in the uh, organizational side of a lot of our team and endurance events. Um, so uh, I'm not certain, but I'm I'm pretty sure. Nine eight seven a road has had a problem as well through turn one. So at the end of the race, he seems to have uh, binned it again, unfortunately. But here we have Chris Meadows coming through to finish the race. And as he comes across the checkered flag, has finished the race. let's uh, see all the cars coming through. You can see our guy waving his checkered flag. So, uh, Chris Meadows, congratulations to the driver pairing of Chris Meadows and uh, uh, Ollie Henley. Here comes Victor Janba finishing off the Janba Trevinovic team. There was Ashim bringing his uh, Ferrari down in 12th. We have Dan Terry. Oh, this is the uh, Joe Grace first, actually. Dan Terry is coming up here, driving the car that actually Blumfield started. And then Michael Wang in his Ferrari. He had to go the whole race on his own. And I might not have mentioned this earlier. Uh, he had to go the whole race on his own because his uh, teammates had technical problems and could not connect. So as uh, Richard Maitland Rice, we saw there, winning the uh, winning the AM split. We have had uh, the first success of the race. I, I like the duty fours as well, but unfortunately most people do not. So in the AM split, this is just bugged and weird. In the silver split, Richard Maitland Price comes in with winning honours, uh, along with Alan Noah in their Bentley Continental. Uh, congratulations to those guys in the 888. Uh, just a little while behind them was uh, Junas Cuviisto, who did a good job uh, holding up after the excellent start by Benjamin Horriot. Tom Tweedy and Mark Benson managed to take third place. And unfortunately, Andrea Jackson Chan just couldn't finish the mechanic off into uh, a podium position. In the overall standings, Chris Meadows and Ollie Henley won with uh, David Long and Mihai making a great comeback drive as Mihai was tipped off uh, in the first lap. And then Victor Yanba finishing off the Trifinovich driven Porsche to... Uh, make a, a podium of not all Astins. Not a big grid, but it was good fun, uh, mostly due to, again, the fact that this is uh, the good thing about these team swap events. When I started sim racing, I didn't really understood why British GT had the driver swap in such a short race. I didn't get it. I didn't really like it. But uh, And in the pro, I still don't actually love it that much. It doesn't work that great. But it works really well for us with a broader range of skill sets to allow these uh, sort of races where you can see David Long and Mihai only finished 11 seconds behind the Chris Meadows Ollie Henley car when that car was almost a lap ahead of everyone early on and uh, being able to have people like Coviesto and uh, and uh, uh, Milstead take over cars from faster drivers and, and fall back a little bit Having other drivers uh, like McKenna, who made a few mistakes, but then uh, was fast at first. And Dixon Chen could take over and pull him back up the field. Same thing happens with a couple of the other cars. Uh, unfortunately, Ashley Bloomfield was the faster driver in that team, but also was the one who put them down the back of the field. Uh, so, uh, either way. A uh, few shout-outs to uh, anyone who watched, anyone who competed, anyone who uh, followed, anyone who subscribed. Once again, exclamation mark signups to come and join any of our races. The next race will be a community race on Kyalami on Wednesday. Then we have the championship series on Kyalami Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The next stream will be on Friday, hosted by Roy Weller, followed by Saturdays, hosted by Paul Glover, and Sundays, hosted by me, Gareth Runtha. Uh, shout outs to everyone who organized this, uh, especially uh, Richard Bradfield, who's been helping with all of our servers and uh, team wise stuff. And uh, we'll see you again uh, very soon. No stream for the race on Wednesdays. Community race, fun race.
just going to all come and have a hangout in the lounge chat. See you on Friday. To feel kind of magic, the old